Well, here's an interesting question for you guys. Did the benzo stop working or are the external factors too much? Let me say it one more time. Did the benzos stop working or are the external factors too much? Now, let me break that down for you a little bit. We expect so much from the benzo, you know, and initially, maybe we, maybe when we first got on it, it, it worked better, right? Not just because we, it was new to us, but because of where we were in our life, right? And so maybe we start at, say, 0.25 or 0.5 milligrams of clonopin, and we're in our 20s and our 30s, and we're going fine through life. And then, you know, we have some kids and the job and the divorce and this and that and the sickness, and we lose a parent, and we lose friends, and life changes, and, and life just keeps battering and changing. And, and here we are, you know, we're, and, and as I said in other videos, we're not building resilience while we're on benzos so much, right? We're kind of just masking and, and kind of putting, you know, a film over that stress, that stress response system. But as we keep going, our stresses are rising. And it eventually, the benzo can only do so much. I mean, in fact, the fact is the limbic system is designed to override a lot of stuff. It's, it's designed to keep you moving away from danger, even if you're tired, even if you haven't slept in days, even if you've been drugged, right? No matter what's going on, you're aching, you've been battered, you've been beaten. I mean, you hear these stories all the time uh, in, in shows like I Survived, where people have been mauled by grizzly bears and, and, and thrown off mountains and buried alive. and all, I mean, just incredible things. And the limbic system just keeps pushing them and pushing them to survive, to walk out of that forest, to, to crawl away from that grizzly bear, sometimes miles. I mean, I heard a story of a guy who got mauled by a grizzly bear and then had to pretty much like crawl like five miles back to his truck to get out, you know, to get to safety and, and, and save his own life. It's unbelievable, right? These stories are unbelievable. What pushes us? This limbic system is like electricity, you know, it just lights you up and it carries you through all this. Now that's an, an ex, you know, pretty damn extreme situation, but that would happen if that guy had say, you say you were going to go to sleep at night, you were camping out in nature and you popped your Xanax for sleep or your whatever your benzo is. And you were just going to sleep and a bear came in and started just attacking you. And he, he just ripped you up and then and ran away. That fight or flight center, you know, that limbic system will override that benzo. You're not going to just be laying there all tranquilized, sort of relaxed and half asleep as a bear is eating you, right? It, it's going to override every damn thing. I don't care if you took night quail or what, you were suddenly going to be very awake and, and uh, more than awake. I mean, every, body, every cell in your body is going to be activated for survival. You know, I mean, all kinds of physiolog physiological changes are going to happen immediately. So again, I beg the, it begs the question, did the benzo stop working or the external, external factors too much? So as we get older and, and, our, and our stresses are rising and rising and we're still on that point five and we're still expecting it to do what it always has done. Well, but things are not maybe not the same as they've always been. Right. And I know, guys, this is not true for everyone. I'm not I'm not painting a picture that and saying this is all this is everybody's story. Right. I'm saying in some situations, if we I mean, I'm asking you to look at your life and say when there were moments and maybe this applies to you, maybe it doesn't. But some of you it certainly will where you can look at your life and say there are moments where, yeah, I think my stress, my stressors at the time just kept rising and the benzo just couldn't keep up. Right. So it wasn't that the benzo stopped working. It, the, the factors kept rising. Now you add another caveat to this. And this is where every one of us get pulled into this this dark place. Um, uh, and, and, and especially in the benzo communities, we're all familiar with this is where the fear, the the narrative of benzos comes into play. This is why I say people who have been drug addicts actually do better coming off of benzos because they're not on the forums. They don't know anything that could go wrong. There is no fear to the limbic system. They just endure the taper hell and they get better because they always expect it to be get better and they just figured they would get better, right? And the limbic system f says, okay, great. Very true with uh, insomnia, you know, to... <clears throat> to endure one night uh, of bad sleep or no sleep, it's like, okay, no big deal. 
you know, it's not until you have multiple nights or until you start reading or understanding, oh, there's this thing called insomnia and it's like a disorder and oh my God, this could stay. And, and it's the fear, it's the fear that grows in the narrative of not sleeping that then kind of creates this pathway to the limbic system and it, it's like a road. And now we can start traveling this road back and forth easier, easier and easier, right? And this is what's happening with the benzos. It's like all these roads are being formed. What if I don't heal? What if it takes me eight years to heal? What if as I'm tapering, when I get lowered, you know, what's going to happen? And I heard Sally in the forum said when she jumped off, things got worse. And John in the other forum said when he was three months off and then suddenly things got worse. And you're thinking about all this horrible stuff. Whether it's true or not, and, and there's always variables to these stories, by the way, to everyone's stories, right? But it's not your story, for one. But more importantly, your narr the narrative that is spiraling in your head, the limbic system's hearing this. And it's almost like you're walking through the forest and this bear has been tracking you. It's already attacked you once, and you're trying to, uh, to escape it. And you're just walking north, and you're thinking, there's a road north. I know I'll hit a road, right? But now... Somebody, you know, texts you and says, hey, I, I hear there's grizzly bears on that road up ahead of you. Oh, my God, you think, you know, now I have a bear tracking me and you're telling me my only hope is to get out of these woods and hit that road. And now you're telling me there's bears on the road. You know, your limbic system hears this and it just says, I'm doomed. There's nowhere to go that I can be safe. There's no way out of this. Or another analogy would be like sitting in the water at night in the ocean and, and getting bumped by sharks and seeing fins every now, you know, you know, dorsal fins every now and then. And it's like your limbic system just starts to paralyze. It starts to freeze up at this point. And so this freezing, this, this additional narrative that I'm talking about is what really um, starts to kind of put us in overdrive as far as uh, the limbic system and then overrides that, that what the benzos can even do. So it's not even so much in, in these experiences that I'm talking about that the benzo just stopped working, is that our stress levels rose so high and our fear level went so high and the narrative was so strong that, that it just simply started to override the benzo. And so, okay, what am I saying? What, what is the value in what I'm saying? What I'm saying is if you can break the narrative, if you can bring back down the fear, if you can manage the stress a little bit better, in many, many, many cases, guys, the benzo suddenly starts working better, right? Because it's not so much that it just stopped working in the first place. It's just we expected too damn much from it. You know what I mean? It's kind of funny how it works in this community where at one hand we're like, this drug is crap and it's nothing. But on the other hand, we put so much on it as if it was like this God molecule. You know, the benzo can take care of everything. My divorce, my job, my illness, my all my stressors. This damn benzo should be able to take it all away, Right? We want so much, but it's not. It's an aid. It's like anything else. It's like pain pills. You know, you take a Vicodin for, you know, or, or some ibuprofen for uh, your neck and your back is aching. It's not, so, you're not supposed to take it when you fall out of a tree and break your back, right? That ibuprofen isn't going to do anything to that pain. So there's a level where the benzo stops working, you know, that, that it, it, it's just not effective, not that it stops working. Now, is there cases where the benzo can stop working? Yes, I'm not talking about that, though, guys. I, of course, that that's a case for people. And, and, of course, that's the caveat here, too, which which scares the hell out of you because you don't know. Is it stopping? You know, it's it's a benzo boogeyman, as I call him. Did the benzo stop working? Oh, my God. You know, um, I say look at your life and ask yourself, did were there other stressors rising? And, and of course, you know, if you want to run the, the program, so to speak, to see, to try to decipher which is which... Try to bring, either way, try to bring down your stress. Try to remove the fear. Try to break that narrative in the mind. And either way, even if, the, if, even if it's true, your brain just finally adapted to the benzo and, it, and you know, like any other drug, you're going to need more to keep going. Um, even if that's true, by bringing down the anxiety and the stress, you're still going to help that benzo be more effective, right? So at the end of the day, fear and that, that, that fear narrative of all this is working against you like a like a slow, quiet, pervasive cancer, right? So think about it. Did the benzo stop working? Maybe. Or possibly the external factors were just too much. 